Hello everyone, uh, my name is Mahendra Mahay and I work on a project called British Library Labs. We are based at the British Library in London in the Digital Scholarship Department, working closely with the digital research team there. I am going to be talking about doing small text and data mining experiments with the British Library's digital collections. British Library Labs is funded by the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation and it's been running for over three years now. In a nutshell, the project encourages researchers, artists, entrepreneurs, educators and anyone else to experiment with our digital collections and data. We try to do this in three ways. The first way is through an in international annual competition where we ask people to come up with an idea of working with our collections. We then choose two of them and work with them for six months to help them answer their research questions and implement their ideas. Through our awards, we recognize work already carried out on the library's digital collections in one of four categories, research, artistic, commercial, and learning and teaching. And finally, we also work on collaborative projects. We are particularly interested in those who have questions which focus on the potential to find and create new things through access to our digital content. For example, being able to ask a question across thousands of digitized books or newspapers using computational techniques, which would not be feasible using manual methods. Of course, we have collections of digitized texts such as playbills, books and newspapers, but we store so much more, such as images and text from the Gulf region, through the Qatar Digital Library, in Asia through the International Tenhuang Project, Hebrew materials such as manuscripts. We also have digitized maps and we place much of our open content on third party services such as Flickr and Wikimedia Commons. We also make metadata from the British and Irish National Library catalogues available freely and we make usage data from our borrowers available on a case by case basis. We also store broadcast TV and radio news. We have music recordings, sheet music, and recorded sounds from the natural environment. Of course, there are several challenges in using our digital collections. Sometimes digital content is not available online because it is still on various storage devices, some of which are now defunct. Sometimes digital content is only available on site due to license or even ethical restrictions. Sometimes it's only available on a specific computer in a reading room. Sometimes it's accessed through a paywall. And some of it is in this shiny happy place, online, open and freely available. The reasons why there are challenges to accessing digital content are of course human. They require different approaches from the library and may often involve an honest, open dialogue and negotiation with publishers. The Labs project has tried to address this problem by creating a residency model for researchers to work intensively with a digital collection on site, so as not to infringe access conditions. However, regarding text and data mining, this can be further complicated due to our relationships with our commercial partners and we have adopted a fairly cautious approach and we deal with this on a case-by-case -case basis. We have lots of messy data. I'm sure you are familiar with the problem of digitizing text and then OCRing them. The software that we use is improving um, significantly but errors are still likely to occur. This can cause challenges when we are trying to carry out text and data mining on this content. Sometimes research embraces this fuzziness and sometimes uh, what is needed is improving the text um, by cleaning it up in order to carry out meaningful research. Working through labs, we have seen our metadata often requires more cleanup if it is to, you, if it, if it is to be used for research, especially using computation. An extra space or full stop can create unwanted errors, often in catalogue records 
There are square brackets which indicate information is inferred or guessed. My colleague, Ben Osteen, created a visualisation to show how much inferred data was contained, for example, in our 19th century monographs, around 2 million records. A blue in dot indicates a square bracket. As you can see, there's a lot of blue. Typically, our research in text and data mining has focused on finding things in messy data. This involves the following steps. Clean up a small amount of the data manually and get something called ground truth. Then write code, computer code, to find things in it reliably. Release the code on a larger, messier set and tweak the code if necessary to be able to find more stuff reliably. Bob Nicholson tried to find Victorian jokes in our archives and released them over social media with associated images to see if they would be popular again. His Victorian mean machine. Through Bob, we were able to learn the pattern and process of access to the data in the first place. As the OCR was so poor, um, time was not on our side, and we decided to clean up the data manually so that we could find the jokes. In fact, we did very little text and data mining and relied heavily on Bob's knowledge of where to look in the archives as where we might find the jokes. Katrina Navikas in 2015 um, proposed an idea called the Political Meetings Mapper. She was particularly interested in the Chartist movement, who were a group who were campaigning for the vote for working people. They were the biggest popular movement for democracy in the 19th century in Britain. Just as this early picture shows, a huge meeting took place at Kennington Common um, about um, bringing the Chartists together. Katrina wanted to use a combination of manual and computation, computational methods to explore our digitised newspapers, playbills and digitised maps and, and to find out where and when the Chartists met and to plot them on a map, hopefully unearthing new history. So how did she do this? Initially, Katrina thought we may have to use crowdsourcing to collect her meetings data because we felt maybe the OCR would be too bad. However, we, tr we tried an experiment to carry out the OCR again on some of the newspaper columns she had, she had identified. What we found was that it was actually much better than we had envisaged. We then used Python scripts to extract the place names and geocode them using a gazetteer. Finally, we use Python code and regular expressions to be able to extract information like dates and use basic natural language processing and a tool called NLTK to calculate dates of words like tomorrow and next week. You can find more information on our GitHub pages. Katrina was new to programming, so we decided to use the IPython notebook, sometimes now called the Jupyter Notebook. And she worked together with Ben Osteen, the technical lead for labs, to write code. Together, they were able to build a classifier um, which um, to analyze texts where meetings may be held, and as well as finding other relevant information for her research. Katrina's previous research was primarily focused on the north of England. She was surprised to learn that many Chartist meetings were actually held in London. Um, see the map of Chartist meetings in London and also see the heat map on the right. Katrina was so excited about this, um, she decided to hold a walking tour of some of these sites and hold a reenactment. The quote in the middle is probably the most important part of the project. Um, she was able to identify over 5,000 meetings in just four years of newspapers. It's not big data, but it made a huge impact on her work 
as it would have taken her over 10 years to do this by hand. Just a quick plug for our awards, which are still live. We're looking for projects already using the British Library's digital content um, that, are, that are doing interesting things in interesting and innovative ways. You have to submit your ideas by the 5th of September. And there are four categories, artistic, commercial, research, and learning and teaching. The winners will be announced at our symposium on the 7th of November. The winners receive £500 and £100 for a runner-up. Thank you very much.